Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Got something really special today. It's gonna to be part one of a multi-part series where I address something I uploaded as a YouTube short a few weeks ago, which featured a million dollar acapella speaker. And then the associated gear is, you don't even wanna know. But I was privileged enough to visit this gentleman's home, which very few people have even heard. Um, but on top of that privilege, I happen to know some of the individuals involved with putting that system together. Rick Brown with Hi-Fi One, great distributor of awesome gear, David Burning gear, Tidal, Tidal speakers, Dolman turntables, and SMC Audio gear, which can do some very high-end stuff. Steve McCormick is the head of SMC Audio, and he's known for his McCormick audio brand back in the 90s that was more, you know, a stereophile A class, but at a budget price but he can do the mega dollar stuff too he's got experience with directed disc recordings and he's one of the handful of guys i call i know what i don't know and he's one of the guys i call when i don't know something and uh it's not that there's only a few people that know more than me it's just a case of people that know more than me and that i feel here ear to ear and see eye to eye on certain things that i can trust and so um he was helpful in getting me and he introduced me to Rick Brown and then I was able to visit them and get an appreciation before even going to this gentleman's house with the million dollar speaker. What all went into this no holds barred attempt at <laughs> the best audio system that could be created for this gentleman's purpose. And I'll go into that when we talk about his video and his system, because that's a big thing you have to learn. So first off, Get an appreciation for Rick Brown's system, which is amazing on its own, and all the things that went into this system. Then part two and three, four, I'll feature that gentleman's system, the million dollar system, his baby system, music clips. It'll be a very comprehensive video, but really get it. This system deserves that kind of treatment because it's a one of a kind in the world. And you see and hear stuff you won't hear almost anywhere else. So without further ado, let's get started with part one. The tube repository and a lot of the special parts, uh, dual end cast caps and uh, Furtech hardware. Um, these are tubes to drool over some of these. Yeah, yeah okay. Special bases and stuff. Mm -hmm. Red base, yep. Yeah, he spent quite a bit of time. Uh, you know, combing for the for the best possible tubes for these um, for the burning amps. Uh, look up here on top. Yeah, these Elrogs. These are the uh, Elrogs that are they're matched, um, brand new, and presumably well. There's always nobody's ever going to agree completely, but Rick feels those are the best for for the burning amps. Beautiful. And let's go take a look at his little sit-up here. Little's probably the wrong word. <laughs> it's modest. Very modest system here. T-Doll, Title. I guess it's Title or T-Doll? You know, um, I, I've kind of gotten in the habit of calling them T-Doll. I actually, I, um, Yorn was here visiting um, well, a couple of years ago and uh, I thought I had it resolved at that point, but I think he responds either way. But I think it's supposed to be T doll, but I could be. Okay. I could be. I've heard people say title, but I guess I usually say T doll just to separate it from the streaming. Exactly, that's one of you the know. reasons I do it as well. And it sounds better. It sounds more appropriate so for this. So this is the Akira. Um, this is uh, the Diamond mid range and tweeter in these utterly fantastic cabinets that are finished like yeah like not, no else. other you can't get any better finish now there is uh there's a speaker you heard the sun rays yep. uh, up in sacramento um that was i think sits in between this and the Asoluta. uh the Asoluta is the absolute pinnacle of the line at least so far um, and is available. It's a much larger speaker. The Asoluta is, is considerably taller than this and also incorporates the diamond mid-range and tweeter drivers. 
And then in the case of the Asoluta, it's also available as a four cabinet system. So you can have a main full range speaker, but it's similar to the, the Sunray that you saw. Okay. Uh, but you can also have it with a, an additional base um, cabinet, which I believe matches the main speaker for size, but is dedicated for base. And these are the burning amps. Yeah, no, these, are the, uh, these are the burning, the relatively... Best in the world for, for uh, Robert Harley, right? He said this was the best. Well, he, what he was talking about was the the previous um, push-pull mo okay. module, which looked like this, but were two tubes, either a 211s or 845s. And uh, those produce 60 watts as a monoblock amplifier. Uh, this is the, um, the single-ended triode version, pure class A, uh, single 845 or 211 tube. Again, uh, we're preferring the 845s from Elrug. Um, now this amplifier is very different, not only in the fact that it's a single end triode, but this design depends on an extremely large choke, um, which in this case, this central Every, chassis okay. here has two chokes in it. This is a one of a kind piece. Um, the normal production uh, amps come with two separate chassis that each have an individual choke. This chassis that you're seeing right here weighs about 125 pounds. Oh, wow. Um, the, uh, the individual um, choke chassis come in at about 55 pounds each, and that's with a pure silver wire cool. choke made by Ypsilon. So uh, pure silver. Made by Ypsilon uh, for this project. Wow. So by the way, introducing Steve McCormick, who you've seen on my channel before, and I obviously use his amps. You've seen interviews with him, uh, and actually worked with David Burning to do some with yeah, this next I, iteration. Uh, I got involved um, a few years ago uh, as uh, Rick and I got to know each other on the um, on the previous 845 uh, monoblock project, um, and I wound up. Rick had already done the initial production run, the first pieces. Uh, and then he needed to do more, so I got involved and redesigned the, the chassis, added the gravity base system, um, added new uh, circuit boards and uh, tube mounting modules. You just saw a couple of those coming in. New tube sockets, and, um, new jacks and hardware. These are the uh, Furtec FT816 binding posts on the back. Um, that's the, uh, Close the best by any post that I've been able to find. Um, so we're trying to, you know, put all the very best quality components in the design, but I redid all of the metal work, um, and made improvements wherever I could. The, um, the gravity based system being one of the more important ones. And in this case, that's a combination. It's a sandwich of, uh, both Panzerholtz and aluminum. Okay. Uh, which here we are. Oh, here's the uh, individual choke chassis that would come with this right the production model. Correct. So it's got is that the Ypsilon logo? Yes, it yeah. is. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, we'll show your this uh, just <laughs> since you're here looking at it. This is the original prototype of the SET. This was hand built by David Burning as a stereo amplifier. And by the way, these, these produce uh, just about 20 watts. Okay. Um, now, because of David's um, so-called ZOTL uh, output circuit, these have the ability to run a, um, you know, a relatively conventional speaker of conventional impedance and, and sensitivity. Um, they, unlike a lot of um, low-powered SET amplifiers, traditionally transformer coupled that have uh, really, you know, have a lot, they struggle with a, you know, a conventional loudspeaker like this. The burnings do a brilliant job of, uh, of running these things and are able to couple to uh, a very wide range of, uh, of speakers. You're not forced to go with a, um, a high sensitivity horn loaded system, for instance, although a lot of People do, and so, for instance, the client that will be visiting later on—that's that's his preference. The, the horns, the yeah. Acapellas, but um, uh, Rick also has clients with the avant-garde trios and 
things like that. But he's got a, another person running the Akiras, and uh, I think uh, Kaiser Cueros are in there, and, and he, you know, he would have to tell you. Tell yeah, you. Kaiser's another one that's interesting. I've never heard firsthand, mm -hmm. but that has the Panzerhold chest. That's how I found out, really, about Panzerhold. It's from them, the, okay. Uh, from what Kaiser was doing. And now I'm, you know, using it in a variety of products. Oh, there's the uh, AC Nexus. Yeah, your, um, your power. Yeah, now that distributor. that is solid. The chassis on that is solid Panzer holds. Um, and then there's a carbon fiber um, dressing on it. Skin up on top, uh, and you can see the um, the grounding tie points. Um, gotcha. Uh, as I mentioned to you, I did um, quite a bit of work on the on the grounding system that's in that. Um, <clears throat> so there is a very advanced grounding uh, system that is part of the design and can be. Uh, it's it's always there. It's always working. Um, but it, then it gives you the ability to create a star center ground for the entire system. And these speakers, unlike most everything else. Do you have a grounding wire? Yeah, there's a third terminal for grounding, which is a is ground, okay. uh, which ties all the metal structure of the speaker together electrically and allows you to ground it. And it's it's amazing to hear what it does. The A and B, it it is really incredible um, to the point where I think any loudspeaker manufacturer he, whoops, hearing that. I hope I didn't. Oh. <laughs> That would be bad. <laughs> That's a wonder. Uh, okay, edit that out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a, it really uh, cleans up the sound a lot, and it's uh, unambiguous, so a uh, very useful technique. I, I, I wish more loudspeaker manufacturers would. I only know of yeah. Tenoy and Audio Vector doing that, and then I think uh, Nathan did a mod to the YGs. Yeah, too. now the YG is a solid aluminum chassis so he um, he modded those so he could connect to them um, and also his like um, the you know the, the equipment racks and stands if they're a metal structure they can be included um, tie a grounding wire into that as well now this and is one of the best turntables in the world the helix one all right this is the model two it's still one. Yeah, yeah he was one model, model, or model or two. Yeah, this is just a second. Yeah, and this is Rick Brown, who the distributor and owner of the house here. Beautiful place. Thank you. Just awesome gear. I've never really seen this at a show. I think I've seen other models, maybe. Right. Not this right. one, for sure. Well, this is the one that uh, Mark Dolman was here recently, the designer, mm -hmm. and he's the one that set this up. Oh, wow. And uh, so this generation has the switch mode power supply actually in the base. Gotcha. And then the uh, you can see it at work if you put the weight on. Yeah, you can, then you can actually see how it's floating weight. because in the middle, and I'm going to put flash of light in as you can see it. That's a minus K platform. You see it? Okay. Yeah. So instead of having uh, additional ways of looking at, this, and that's really these, used these for plinth, and I think that's really smart. Yeah, minus <laughs> K is like that's the ultimate. Yes, which is used like on yeah. electron microscopes. Yeah, that's not even really for audio files, but <laughs> right, right, you know, right, yeah. well, there are more people in audio using it. And then this is the Reed Five A. Yeah, the Five A. Um, so this is it. Part of it looks like a pivoted tone arm, but the bearing structure um, is arranged such that it describes a. Um, uh, a straight line that the cartridge remains tangent as it moves across the record. So if you if you yeah. can see the the multi point pivot action at the back, very tricky. That is um, design. And if you notice here, there's no offset, no angular offset for the cartridge. It's a straight line coming out of the arm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because of this, the pivot arrangement, the geometry of that allows it to maintain tangency. All the way across the record. So that is innovative. Indeed. There's a, well, we've got a few compliance to that too. That's yeah. one other thing that was done. And uh, that's why we're using these. Each one of those is three grams. So we've added six grams of compliance. Well, mass out of the, the yeah. you know, out of the uh, yeah. head shell end to tune the uh, effective mass of the whole arm system. And I understand JR was out here with Wally Tools he was as just well. Here last week. He did this table as well as the ones we That's awesome. Today. That is awesome. Yeah. And then what else we have here? 
Oh, the Lyra funnel stage. Yep. That's uh, an oldie but a goodie. What's a 4SE was the original one. This is the 4.3 SE. So it's an original design where the power supplies have remained the same since they originally were launched. And that's been probably 17, 18 years ago. So it's the exact same power supply you're looking at there for the line stage as well as for the phone stage. But the actual electronics, Jonathan Carr, who's also the designer of all of the Lyra cartridges, designed these electronics. And so he's been here a couple of times with, uh, with Steve, the owner of Lyra. Okay, yes. <laughs> the pedigree of people involved with this system is unmatched. Uh, that's amazing. And them labs. Did you guys talk about all that? Uh, I, I talked about the AC Nexus. I did not go into the cabling. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about some of the cabling here. Sure. Almost all the cabling in this system is made by Dave Kleinbeck at Incline Cables. And he's, he's a guy that's been in the business for quite some time now. And uh, Dave has designed all of the umbilicals that we use okay. uh, for the SET amplifiers, as well as the grounding cables that I think Steve talked a bit about. Right, that go into the Nexus. Cables are silver grounding cables that, that Incline made as well. Okay. And you've talked about the Nexus and how we tied all the grounds together. Yep. Did you show them uh, the wall? Was it the I did not yeah. go over to that. Uh, let me just show you this. I think it's important because... Steve, when he made the Nexus, one of the things he wanted to get our clients to do was to tie the grounds together. And in this case with the loudspeakers, you think you've already mentioned the loudspeaker yeah. does have another binding post for mm -hmm. ground. And as the designer of the loudspeaker explained to me, Yorn, he said each one of the baskets has a silver wire connected to it, which terminate down. Is with that right? Okay. Yes, that's how he did that. So we are bringing them here, and Steve probably showed you yep. as an example where they all come together there. Yep. But the other side of it is if you follow that AC cord, what you will see is that it powers the entire system. The other cords are not consequential. They don't have anything to do with the system. You have one, so you have everything yes. going into one out. Yes. Okay. The entire system is star grounded. And then that, Steve put that in right here where I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. So that goes out to a couple of copper grounding pipes outside. Okay. So one cable runs it, and that's one of the ways we get the noise cord out. Wait a minute. And in this particular case, that cable happens to be the most recent um, offering from Furatech. Uh, they just just released a, uh, a total assault on state-of-the-art and AC power cords. And I know that you're still somewhat skeptical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Moving, your, moving the needle on me there. A little bit. Um, um, but that, it, it, what, what do they call that one, Rick? This is called the V1. The it's, V1. It's, it's really, really new. There is uh, but one review that's actually online about this. It's a very new cable. It is there all out of salt, as are all of the other cables that are in here. So we have the one cable feeding the Nexus, which is the Furatech V1, and all the rest of the cables are a new cable from the Incline people, and uh, you can get an example of those. Yeah, these are beautiful. Yes, and they're called Xerxes. So you can uh -huh. see that actually the part yeah. it. They're all these the Xerxes. Xerxes, yeah, you can yeah. kind of see it in green. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then the uh, there's another piece. Did you talk about the area and Jensen's brush? Uh, no, I was about to mention that okay. because we, we kind of went past it. But what looks like a typical sort of subwoofer, you know, that a lot of people might have in their system is in fact part of Arian Jansen's velocity uh, woofer system. The, and the control box is over here in, on the bottom of the rack. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, there you go. So um, this is an invention of Arian's, um, which uh, he personally installs and sets up um, such that it, um, it ties into the system. I mean, it does work at lower frequencies, but it's there more to improve uh, imaging and um, overall base performance. Um, yeah, you can hear it spatially as well. Yeah, yeah very, very, very spatial. So, so it, it's he refers to it as Sonorous Audio is Arian Jensen's company, and, and he refers to this as his proximity woofer system. I'm sorry, I said yeah. velocity. Excuse yeah, me. No, it's proximity. Problem, problem proximity. And what I found out in talking about this to other designers, this idea of a proximity woofer is not new. I mean, it's in the textbooks. Okay. So Arian has chosen to do something about it. And so what he's done is created a system that is an air replacement system as he explains it. So as long as we have this door shut and we seal this room up, 
what it's doing, if you were in an anechoic environment, using his words, if we were in an anechoic environment, you wouldn't need to worry about the changes in velocity from the loudspeaker, air pressure velocity, to listening position. And he's saying that that does is replace the lost air pressure. Is that right? Point. And so he measures from the point that you listen in. Okay. And that's how he develops it. Now, if you come here and look, you can see the things that he's digesting. That's what I was trying to level. film and understand yeah, at the, the same time. Yeah, i got to get so closer you got here. phase, level, shelf, and then you also have over here, group delay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those vernier dials, they get locked in based on his measurements at the listening position with his air pressure device. Wow. So it doesn't give you more bass. It's not a subwoofer. Okay. There's, there's no more bass in this room than these speakers are capable of. And so he calls it. Do is replace what's lost. An air velocity. What does he call it? An air. It's an air velocity device. Is I have device. never. Now there's there's some physics to this stuff. Yeah, you yeah. No, the physics in it is that you need a seal box woofer. Right. And it can't be much bigger than this. And there's more to it than that. I'm just giving you kind of an overview. It does have a white paper. But the point, though, is that you can place that just about anywhere in the room. Because as you've noted, that's not a traditional place to put it. Sure, a sure, yeah. Because it's not a subwoofer. It's not being used as one. Is it a subwoofer? Yes. Is it being used as one? No. So is there much excursion to do the correction or not? Yes. In okay. fact, we'll, we'll demonstrate for you okay. on and off. It's very easy to do. You see that little blue button? We Turns it on and off. Everything it does by just turning it on and off. This is, uh, this is definitely a first for me. I think it is for all of us, isn't it? That's true. Um, as you said, I had sort of heard about the concepts right. at some point in the past, but I never Nobody seen implemented it. Yeah. Specifically right. done about it. But yeah, so he know. comes out here to measure it first and calibrate it. Yes. Right. Yes. So it would have to be recalibrated based Every on changing. Every time you change an amplifier, yes. You're going to okay. have to do a change of speaker, move them around. Okay. And, and that, that is the true limiting factor to the system. It's a great limiting factor. I mean, there's no question okay. about that. You need area. Without area, this doesn't work. And so the other part about the whole system is that he has, over the years, proven that he can reverse the way you set up speakers. Typically, if you think about Dave Wilson years ago, he'd walk around the room, he'd be clapping his hands, he'd be looking for that place. Remember all right, the, right, right. Wilson yeah. Wilson right. method? Yeah, I, I've, done, I've gone through that okay. method, yeah. Uh, I did okay. too. I watched him do it. I watched yeah. McGrath do it. Yeah. The point is, is that they also are looking for the place first where you get the most linear base. That's the first step in the setup, okay. is the base. Then we worry about spatiality and imaging right. and all that sound. Reflection. You reverse that with this woofer. Okay. First you find a place where the speakers sound the best, where they're most linear and spatial. Okay. Then this will correct the base. The base side. So it reverses the process. Because typically, they're at odds with each other. They're, yeah, they're right? the same. Yeah, right. So you have to compromise. Correct. Correct. And usually it's the base that gets compromised. How much is he going to be selling this for? Before I even hear it, I don't want to know whether I should like it or not. <laughs> well, it's, it's at the point now where it's hard for me to say that it's going to go forward because it literally is so difficult to, to get do. someone to buy into the whole program. Right? Okay. Because you know how we are as audio files. We want yeah. to change product, right? So the places where it's placed, those guys are willing to go through it. Okay. Go through it over the process. And over yeah. They're willing to do it over and over. Yeah. But the basic unit itself... Uh, uh, the Arian was 5000 for the basic unit and then plus plus for the setup. Okay. Because you have to have him come out and there's a lot of pluses in that. Yeah. Okay. That's why I hesitate to say it. So it yeah. is something yeah, I understand. that I use, but it's not something that I tell my clients they should necessarily get engaged with unless they have a perfection spent. Okay. Yeah. Because you're going to need him a lot. My clients never stay with the same amp, the same thing like, okay. for very long. Yeah. But they're upgrading with my own amps. And as they change my, their amps... Even the burnings, I have three distinct settings for that based on the three amps that I, that I sell. Okay. Each one of them needs a new setting, so that's why. That's interesting. Yeah. But it's something I would be interested in probably because yes. I'm kind of that perfectionist, especially when I have my dedicated room when I don't do a lot of changes. Exactly right. Um, and see, the other thing too is that um, the only reason that we don't have Steve McCormick makes the Hi-Fi 1 version of the VRE2 line stage. That is the preferred line stage. We just don't have one at the moment because we sell them all. I mean, we we <laughs> yeah. make them, we sell them, we make them, we sell them. So I'm a bit like the cobbler's shoes. I'm the last <laughs> one to get one. But <laughs> I, I always have the I'm wiring. I'm on his right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you'll, you'll see it at the client's home um, yeah. that we're going to be visiting. And Doug is enjoying his um, 
that we had a Zoom, but we had to reshoot it because I screwed up the Zoom. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to feature that. And I'm actually going to visit Doug, so I'm going to see it firsthand, oh, okay, uh, hopefully in July. So that's upcoming. Um, so yeah, awesome. And I always have the wiry gear here because in the U.S. from its inception, I was the single guy that sold the wire electronics and still. So that's why okay. I'm still, I always have that as backup. Well, yeah. yeah, I know always. Lyra, almost all my friends, you know, either have it or lust after Lyra. And there you go. JR you speaks go. very highly of Lyra. And this dome and turntable is amazing. Yes, it is. With that yes, is. that isolation that's built into it, that is just incredible. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, Mark Dolman, he had a great idea to do this. Mm -hmm. A great idea because a lot of folks have bought minus case for their turntables and for their electronics, but to build it into the plinth, that I think was pretty smart. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because great idea. People pay a pretty penny for this, out, you know, by exterior. itself. Yeah, by itself. And then it's a big black box that you know kind of yeah. makes a little bit wonky, if you want my opinion. Because yeah. well, yeah, it's not really audiophile dressing, you know, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's well, beautifully the whole effective. system works incredibly well. Um, I've, I have certainly never heard a better turntable. I'm not sure I've ever heard it's equal. God, it's amazing. It's going to take us a while, Jason, to talk about um, the amplification, which is really something that's quite special and unique. But our client's waiting. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go to a, another amazing room. Yeah, and we can finish this up. Okay.